Okay, everybody, we're going to go ahead and get underway. My name is Justin Hill. Thanks for joining us for our January 2012 edition of Crystal Reports Tips and Tricks. We put on these tips and tricks webinars once monthly. Actually, we missed last month. We took a little vacation, so I have lots to talk about. Uh, if you ever want to see any, any of our previous software tips and tricks, you can always go to blog.marksgroup.net. Or, as a matter of fact, we've just started to upload our both of our crystal and gold mine webinars to YouTube. And you can find our channel at this URL right here. We've been doing that since August, so there's uh, about a half dozen up there at this point. Okay, so let's jump right in. Today we're going to be talking about the dreaded null. Uh, how to test for a null in crystal reports. Why is a null different than a blank, and, and why do we care? Uh, we're also going to be looking at... Um, how to break a page for each group. So when we're grouping a report, say by employee or by sales rep, say we, we, we want um, each sales rep to occur on their own page. I'm gonna show you how to do that. It's actually really easy. And I expect actually to spend the bulk of our time today talking about offloading selection logic into easy bite-sized formulas. This, this is actually a pretty nice technique which you can use when your selection criteria gets way out of control. All right, so let's jump right in. What I have right here is just a very basic report. It's just showing me rows from a customer table. <clears throat> and we can see here when I preview it, I have a couple of fields here. I have company contact, state, a create on date, and a couple of key fields. Those of you who use Goldmine will recognize this as a Goldmine database. Um, so what we have here is just a list of people with some particular characteristics about them. It looks like uh, this key two is tracking uh, industry, whether it be engineering, rocket science, or lab assistant. And it looks like this key three, well, wow, hmm. It looks at some point this key three was tracking an account manager, and at some point it was tracking what we were estimating for them, and now it's tracking estimated dollars. Uh, as crystal reporters, you're going to run into this stuff all the time, and I'm going to we're going to kind of work through uh, dealing with that uh, key field later on. So let's just talk about the null. For Gene Marks and Corey here, we can see that there's there's really a company field drug onto the report for them, but it's showing up as blank, which typically is fine. But here here's the rub: when you start to group the report together, say by company name. And let's do that. Let's insert a group on company in ascending order. That's fine. That was just insert group. And when we insert a group in Crystal, that gives us a new set of group header and footers. I'm going to move my stuff over a little bit just by using the arrow key. So we can see that right. Uh, and, and also, whenever I'm grouping a report, I like to increase the font size of my group header just a little, little bit. Having a nice, easy-to-read report can make a lot of difference, actually. I just drag that out. And again, just using my font increase button there. Okay, so what we're seeing now is the report is actually grouped by company. And actually, I'm going to cheat. I'm going to go into my Goldmine database. I'm going to make a new record. refresh my report all right so here's what I wanted to show you is that I'm grouping by company and whenever you group in crystal you get this handy dandy little group tree on the left hand side it shows you all of the unique values because when we think about what a group is doing all it's doing is grouping the detail section the part that repeats by every unique value found in company for instance Acme appears three times so those are all grouped together however you'll notice here at the very tippy top we have two empty groups why is that because one of these values is blank which means that uh, somebody at some point clicked I'm, I'm sorry about my process monitor screwing it up but somebody at some point had had a company value and then had it removed and that's a blank however another person has never had a company value ever and that person's going to return a null. 
So uh, I guess when we start to group a report by these unique values, a null is distinct from a blank, which all that really means for us is that we have these blank guys hanging out here in two separate groups. So how do we consolidate our blanks? Or more importantly, how do we test for the null? We're going to do that by actually deleting my test formula that I already made. We're going to create a new formula. So I go to my field explorer, I right click on formulas and I hit new. Whenever I name my formula fields, I like to prefix them with a lowercase frm. You'll see that, that that makes it very easy for my lazy eye to, to kind of figure out what kind of crystal object I'm looking at, especially for those of you who have been creating monster reports with dozens and dozens of uh, items in here, can help clarify the list for you. So I'm going to create a uh, null test field, or a formula rather, and that drops me right in to the formula editor, and I probably say it too many times, but if you guys aren't comfortable or familiar with the formula editor, you need to jump in there, you need to start playing around because that's what really separates the wheat from the chaff as far as crystal reporters go. This is where all the really sharp tools are. So again, we're testing for null. So the way uh, a lot of people, uh, for some of you that know SQL, you're probably used to being able to do something like this, say company is null. However, we don't have that ability in crystal. What we actually have to do is use the is, is null function. Let me show you how that works. So let's just step back and, and figure out what we're doing. We, we, we want to test for a null company. And when that company is null, we want it to return a blank. And remember, the whole idea being to consolidate our blanks up here on the top two groups. So let's just test for a null. So I'm going to say if is null, which is the function that Crystal wants you to use. If is null, like that, and whenever we use a Crystal function, we're passing a value to the function, encapsulated in open and close parentheses. So if my is null for the company field is true, which means if it's null, then say blank. Just that easy. I'm going to test my syntax, no errors found, love to see that. I'm going to go ahead and say that. Now even though we want to do more with the formula, even though the formula is not finished, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to save it and I'm going to see what it's doing. Uh, especially those of you who have, have wicked cool ideas for a new crystal formula, do yourself a favor and test it in parts because the last thing you want to do is have a dozen lines of code in here that you have to troubleshoot. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to drag this right in here under company. Again, whenever I'm testing a formula field, I always like to drag it right next to the field that it's, it's working from. And I'm going to make it bold. That way I can figure out which field it is, and I'm going to underline it. So, okay, so what this is actually doing is testing for a null. So in this case, Gene has a null because our formula is saying, if it finds a null, say blank. So now we actually have to tell the formula to also expect a true blank. We want, remember, we want to consolidate our groups up here. Okay, so it seems to be grabbing the null reliably. So I'm going to go back in here and edit my formula. And we're going to add an else. Whenever you use if something is true, then do this other thing, we can append it with an else. So if the company is null, then say blank. Otherwise, keep going. If my company field is truly blank and that's typically how you do it, it just equals an empty string then I have a thing about caps in my formulas then blank so now what the formula is doing for us is, is it's converting two possible values to the word blank right it's converting a null to the word blank and also uh, a zero length string into a blank Let's check our syntax and we'll test that. Because the formula is already on the report, all we got to do is go to preview. Aha! So now it's reliably intercepting either a null or a blank value. So the formula is thinking about what's going on and it's kicking out a blank and it seems to be working reliably. So at this point, uh, we want to, again, we want to remove these top two empty groups. So instead of grouping uh, in a raw fashion on the back end company field, what we actually want to do is um, 
edit our formula one more time. And we're going to say, okay, if it's null, say blank. If it's just a zero length string, say blank. Otherwise, tell us what it is. Whenever you use if then else in crystal formulas, you always should have, or typically should always have, a final else, which is your catch all, it's your trump card. So if none, none of these other things are true, it's just going to give us the company name. Now we save that, we preview that. All right, great. So now, in the case of nulls or zeros, we get blank. Otherwise, we just get the company. So now, you can see that we don't want to group on the company field, we want to group on our null test field. And the easiest way to do that is to go to your report, or your group expert rather, under the report menu. So that's report, change group expert. And there's our group on the company field. We're going to go ahead and click options. And change that to group upon our super clever formula. So now you can see that we've eliminated, I'm going to go ahead and remove that formula because I know it's working right. We've eliminated our blanks, and now we have a blank group. So I, now, what I want you to think about that, um, and take it just one step further in, in your mind. Um, in this case, we're testing for, for nulls and blanks. But if you think about the if-then-else in a formula, it can really test for anything. So, so you immediately have the power to programmatically convert anything to anything based upon a database value, as long as you know what to expect, as long as you know what to say if for, right? The left-hand side. Once you know that, you can kick out whatever values you want. Really handy tool to have. So in this case, maybe I want blanks at the top of my group tree. Maybe I want blank to be the first group. So let's. I'm going to show you a neat way to do that. Um, you'll notice here that because I'm grouping the report is automatically wanting to sort itself uh, in, in order based upon that group and we can see that if we go back into our change group expert <clears throat> and back to options and it says it wants to print them in ascending order or descending or specified or original so in this case when I want something to occur in unalphabetical order I'm going to go ahead and select specify and when I do that, when I specify the order, I open up the specified order tab. And I want to say I want blank to be first. Now, typically the way the, the specified order tab is used is typically not used on a company field. Because what you usually end up doing is explicitly defining the order of all the unique values here. Which I guess wouldn't be applicable for a company field. But here's a, a, another really cool thing you can do. We can specify the order and say, well, the others? What do I do for the others, the people that don't belong to this one specified group? I'm going to say leave in their own groups. And what that should do, aha, we get blank first, and then the report continues on normally. Nice trick. Uh, what, you're, what you probably are going to see or have seen in, in, in the field and working with reports <clears throat> is that you're going to start to catch a lot of weird database entries like the occasional blank, the occasional null, the occasional misspelling of rocket science or industry or lab assistant. And those are going to jump out at you uh, once you start grouping things together. So being able to, to catch exceptions with a formula and put them into their own little group on the very first page so the boss can see what's going on is always a really handy tool to have. Okay, wow, we talked a lot about null. Let's talk about breaking a page while we're on the subject of groups. Uh, in this case, I'm grouping uh, not on the company field. We're grouping actually on that null test formula field, which is actually a nice technique to use anyway. Even if you were going to group on the company field, uh, I would recommend just creating a simple formula to kick out the company field. The reason being is that uh, if you want to change anything about the way uh, the, the report is grouping things together, you can easily always go back 